my name is Mia Hawkins and I am interviewing Mrs. Fanny Hamilton on July 19th in Washington, D.C. at Mrs. Hamilton's home. Thank you for opening your space. You're welcome. This interview is part of the D.C. Gardeners Oral History Project sponsored by the Neighborhood Farm Initiative and D.C. Humanities Council. Thank you, Ms. Hamilton, for talking with us today, You're with welcome. me today. You're welcome. Um, and can you start by sharing your name and your address? Okay, I'm Fanny Hamilton, and I'm here at 415 Aspen Street Northwest um, in Washington, D.C. And I have been living in this area, I'll say, um, actually 35, four years, 34 years wow. for me. Um, but this area is probably 50-something years from my husband because he grew up over here. Oh, wow. oh okay. He went to Coolidge Good. and um, <laughs> Howard. <laughs> so he's been in this area quite a long time. Okay. Yeah. So where did you, did, are you from? Uh, I was born in New Orleans okay. and um, my parents came up here when I was about probably three or four. And um, we ended up living over in Anacostia. Wow. And actually, uh, me and my four brothers, we grew up over in Berry Farms. Oh, wow. Yeah, back in the day. So I, and I went to old Bernie um, Elementary School. And um, we stayed over in um, Berry Farms, I guess, until I was around um, probably 10 or 11. And I can remember moving to the now brand new apartments that they have facing the freeway over there, mm -hmm. Suitland Parkway. Wow. Well, they used to have some apartments, and I, I, I can't remember the name, but those apartments are long gone now. And we stayed in that for a few years, and then my parents ended up moving to um, Bangor Street Southeast where my mother is still living with um, her care, one of my brothers who is her caretaker. Nice. And I ended up going to um, Our Lady of Perpetual Help um, Elementary School, okay. Catholic Elementary School. And um, when I got, when I finished elementary school, I entered St. Cecilia's Academy here that used to be located at 6 in East Capitol. Mm. And they're no longer there either. Oh, wow. But um, I did all of my schooling here in the district. I even went to Federal City College for yeah. about two years, right. <laughs> and then ended up finishing um, at Strayer College. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay, so I guess when you were here, um, you said you got here and you were about three or four, you guys were in Anacostia, and it was very fun, so did you, I guess, even at that early age, do you remember anything about gardening? Did you grow anything back then, or were there early starts? Yes, there, there really was. There really was. My mother and um, father um, ended up having some uh, property out in um, Clinton, um, Waldorf, Maryland. I'll say Waldorf. Yeah, not Clinton, but Waldorf, Maryland. And um, her sister, my aunt, um, I remember um, back in the day when I was young, I remember my grandfather, my mother's father, came up from New Orleans to help. Um, her sister's husband, my father, built their house out in Waldorf, Maryland. And um, Grandpa Freeman, that was my mother's maiden name, he came up from New Orleans um, and he helped build, build the house. And when that house was completed, I do remember my uncle putting in a garden because my mother um, would go out, we would go out and visit and spend the night in the car out there in Maryland. And I remember us, you know, <laughs> out there picking, I remember us picking um, blueberries, I mean, um, blackberries alongside of the road in the early mornings. And I remember us planting the seeds in the plot that my uncle had. Wow. And I remember harvesting beans and corn. I remember crabbing out there because wow. they were near the water. So I remember a lot of things back in the day. And, and um, the house where my mother is now on Bangor Street, she always she always planted something. Even even when we were living in um, Berry Farms, I actually remember my mother having a cactus that she grew in a pot at home. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember I was so fascinated with that cactus, and I, I, I don't remember the name of it, but mm -hmm. if I look through a book of cactus and succulents, I, I can find it. Mm -hmm. But it bloomed, and it made such a beautiful blossom. And I remember it had a beautiful fragrance. And that was when I was probably about nine, eight or nine, I, re I remember that happening. And mm -hmm. when we lived in Berry Farms, I remember um, my mother always had a little roll, roll of four clocks. Um, so that, you know, they opened up in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I, I do, I always remember my mother having something growing. Mm -hmm. And when we lived on Bangor Street, mommy had roses, um, she had petunias. Mm -hmm. So we always, and I, I remember this, I remember I had to get on my knees, me and my brother, <laughs> and we made her, um, we took the bricks and lined her garden up for her. Aww. So we, we made a little, um, wall out of the bricks for her. And I remember doing that. <laughs> wasn't too happy, but but you know, I was. I did do something in the yard. Aww. But I, I always was around flowers or something. You know, all, always. Um, my mother always had flowers growing. And if she didn't have the space, I remember us going out in Maryland, and we put stuff in my uncle's um, garden. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I grew up. But, you know, mm -hmm. learning learning this and got the skill. I know I got it from my mother. Mm -hmm. I know I got it from Beautiful. my mother. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So I guess what kind of food did you guys grow? Oh, I, well, I, like I said, I remember like picking the beans. Okay. Um, um, I think Uncle Smith, he grew um, the dried beans. So they were probably like black-eyed peas or crowder peas. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, you know, and, and corn, we always had corn. Somebody always was growing corn. Mm -hmm. And always tomatoes, you know, those, you always had corn and tomatoes. <laughs> and you always uh, usually had some kind of squash too. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't have, um, excuse me, cucumbers, you had some kind of squash, um, zucchini, or the yellow squash, summer yellow squash. Or um, I don't remember I don't remember pumpkins that much, okay. but I, I do remember the squash and I do remember um, cucumbers, beans, tomatoes, and corn. Okay. I remember oh okra. Don't let me forget okra because okra is definitely one of the plants that um, my mother grew up with because gumbo is is, is, is <laughs> yes. the thing that we always had. We always had, and I tell you, I learned that skill from my mother and to this day I do have people fighting over my wow. gumbo. In fact, <laughs> in fact, to be honest with you, last year for Christmas gifts I actually made gumbo wow. and put it in containers with a ribbon on it and gave it to my family That's for sweet. Christmas gifts. <laughs> so the gumbo is hidden here and, okay. and, and, and the okra does go in that. Right. So, yeah. And you made, you grew yeah, okra. I had I had okra in my garden last year. Wow. Yeah, I did. Beautiful. That is so nice. <laughs> oh, good. Yes. So I guess back then, did you, did the family, I guess from the garden that you guys had, did the family eat from, eat majority from the garden? Do you remember going to farmer's markets? Did you guys frequent the grocery store? Or where was your yeah. food coming from? Back in that day, I definitely remember eating a lot during the growing season from the garden wow. per se. You know, coming up, growing up, I don't, I don't really ever remember going to a farmer's market. Not until I became an adult, okay. and um, you know, had my own kids. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember my parents ever doing it because we always, um, mommy either always had somebody like Uncle. Um, Smith that had the garden or we knew people that had gardens and they would wow. give us food like that and my it was five of us um, I was the oldest and the, and the only girl and so I always remember um, my parents <laughs> having fresh vegetables and and we always got them that way you know wow. somebody giving us something because I can I can even remember um, back in the day um, I think daddy worked he worked for the um, Department of the Army, and I think he was stationed at Cameron Station, and I, I remember um, him, and he worked, I think he worked for the um, commissary, okay. so he was, yeah, so he was working for the commissary, but I remember back in the day, you know, sometimes uh, 
um, things got to be a little hard and, and with a lot of kids, you know how kids are always hungry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Daddy would come home and talk about how, how we waste so much and we still waste as a as, as, as a group of people, the, the United States wastes so much. As he would say, you know, if a crate of eggs broke in the container that they were moving into the store so it could be shelved, they got rid of the whole big container. And then you couldn't even go get any of that food, you know, because I remember, I remember not too long ago, um, that's why stores had locked down trash containers because they don't want people to go in them, you know. And I know, um, I know it's a health thing. Yeah, I know it's a health thing. Mm -hmm. And stores don't want to be responsible for people getting sick. Yeah. But, you know, there was a movement um, a few years ago out in California where they do, they did the dumpster diving. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they actually go into the dumpsters that aren't locked down mm -hmm. and they go pull that good food and they cook with that food and they feed the homeless with that food. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in some cities like the sophisticated D.C., you know, we can't do that. Because um, I do remember um, we did um, have people going to the dumpsters and picking the food out of the dumpsters. Because, I mean, they throw away, you know, overripe bananas. They're just overripe. You still can use those bananas. Look at you. You use your, your soft bananas for smoothies and everything. So you can still use use those food items, you know. But we waste so much in this country. and it's, it's so sad, you know, because we should not have anybody starving, uh -huh. nobody homeless, mm -hmm. and nobody without clothing. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on that. And we can probably get it all from a plant. And we, oh, we can, we can. Everything, everything. I mean, all of the plants around us. Uh, plants feed us. They take care of us when we're sick. Mm -hmm. They clothe us, mm -hmm. and they shelter us. Mm -hmm. So everything comes from from our plant world. Everything comes from our plant room. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I'm guessing, did you guys spare your seeds? Did you, you guys, you didn't have to go buy seeds. You could either go get them from your uncle and use the ones that you grew already. Well, we did both. We okay. did both because I remember Uncle Smith would save some of his bean seeds and stuff. <laughs> and I also remember um, I would even order seeds, you know, because okay. back in the day, I, I I really did get interested in gardening mm -hmm. at an early age, <laughs> and um, even with my own two kids, um, I started them off when they were in diapers. We would they would be out there helping me in in my garden, and and um, and now my grandbabies. I have my two little, the two youngest ones, um, the little girl Amarana, who's seven. I I kept her before she started school and. At one years old, she was out there picking cherry tomatoes, and to this day, she loves cherry tomatoes. Wow. And little Obi, <laughs> the one that I, I just finished keeping, uh, he was out there the other few weeks ago digging with his little shovel, helping me. So, as soon as you get them started, you get, you know, they love it. They love yeah. it, and it just becomes natural with wow. them. And you just have to be patient with your children, mm -hmm. but they learn, you know. And I, when when my two were coming up, Nia and little Dave, I call him little Dave, <laughs> but when they were coming up, I always um, took them out back with me when I was planting, and then when the stuff started growing, we would go out there and have lessons, and kids can learn so much. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what I do when I do my lectures when I talk to children and adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're learning math skills, mm -hmm. you're learning mm -hmm. about the weather, Yes. you're learning about everything, you're learning about insects. Mm -hmm. So. You know, you never stop learning, and you're learning yes. so much. Wow, uh -huh. that's very true. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I guess so. Huh? So, some memories of food. What are some? You, you, I mean, any specialties that mom or uncle or anybody that you know you can remember from what you guys grew, like some. Well, the gumbo, which is now. yeah, we always had the okra. We always had okra, and I usually always try to put okra into this. This year, actually, is the first year I didn't I didn't plant any okra. Mm -hmm. But um, I usually just plant my basics. Um, the things that I really remember, I, I remember the greens, mm -hmm. but I don't want to leave them out because we <laughs> always we always had collard greens, mm -hmm. and collard collards are good. Yeah. They're they're delicious, and um, I remember kale mm -hmm. kale a lot too. Um, and that's one of the greens that I like growing and I actually have not put mine in yet but I'm getting ready to mm -hmm. and um, my husband loves kale mm -hmm. 
and um, what other things um, usually I guess I want to say I've al well, I always have tomatoes and I always have several kinds because mm -hmm. I right now I, I know I have two different kinds of growing out back um, and you know but as a kid those were the main thing and it was basically I guess corn beans collards okra and, and the squashes. Those mm -hmm. were the five that I really remember mm -hmm. growing up as a child and harvesting back in the day. Oh, wow. Okay? Are you going to stop? Okay. Um, well, in your long history of gardening, um, actually from when you were three or four, when you can remember up until now, can you tell me, and I'm pretty sure now no, there's no perfect way, did you make any mistakes? Well, yeah, we all, we all make mistakes. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, the mistakes. Yeah, mistakes. Yeah, we, we all make mistakes. And um, I don't remember um, mistakes, per se, when I was a little, you know, little girl. Mm -hmm. But um, after I got married and started my garden, garden, gardening um, journey, this is sort of like a um, tutorial that I like to show people. Mm -hmm. um, back in um, the, this is one seventy-five. Oh Oprah. wow! <laughs> um, back in seventy, I think it was seventy-four. We moved on Thirteenth and Hamilton Street Northwest. We wow. bought our first house, and um, that's when my daughter was about. Uh, she was a little. She was born in '74, so she was a little one. And this was my first attempt in growing something on my own property. And um, I started off with doing some okra. So I did that, and um, it turned out pretty good. It turned out pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. it turned out pretty good. We had. Um, I guess a nice handful of of okra, you know, mm -hmm. not a ton, but it, it was something. And from um, that house, I moved um, to this house. And like I said, we've been in this house for 34 years. Wow. And um, when we moved here, first moved here, I had to clear the backyard. And um, this is after the clearing because we actually had a lot of trees and shrubs growing in the back because an older couple had, had this house mm -hmm. and um, the back had really grown. So after we cleared it, I started putting in roads. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, I guess, before I started um, doing a lot of reading because I, I would get a lot of uh, magazines and do a lot of reading about gardening. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people were doing gardening as a hobby too. So in 76, I think that was when I first laid my first rose and started planting in rows. And we talk about mistakes. This actually was a mistake because <laughs> um, I did not know that in our backyard there is a stream that runs from Rock Creek Park oh, wow. all the way down to Blair Road wow. here, um, to the underpass down there. And um, one spring, after I had planted, we had um, a lot of rain, mm -hmm. and the stream bubbled up, and I got flooded out. Everything oh, wow. was flooded, so you know that was that was a major mistake. But I knew nothing about it until it happened, mm -hmm. and so then I said, "Hmm. So if this can happen again." and that's going to have to make me replant and replant, I said it should be a better way about it. So I guess through my readings and stuff, I started reading about organic um, raised bed gardening. So I decided to go ahead and have my husband um, put in some raised beds for me. Oh, wow. And we started doing that in the um, 80s. I started <coughs> doing the um, raised beds. And I had a lot of different. Um, I had a lot of different experiences because I had I, I do my own composting, mm -hmm. and um, when I first started my composting, that was when I had my rose mm -hmm. here. I um, just had a hole in the ground, a pit in the ground, uh -huh. 
and um, I remember my next door neighbor, excuse me, he said, um, are you sure you want to do that? You know, it might get little critters. And I said, well, if I do it right, I shouldn't have any critters. Okay. And if you do compost right and properly, okay. you don't have any little visitors like yeah. mice or anything. You really don't. Mm -hmm. And I um, did my composting and it wasn't any problem because you know, as you know, when you compost, you don't put any meat or exactly. grease or anything like that. You, you're only composting plant material. So basically, whatever you pick and toss in there or whatever you don't use in your um, salads and stuff when you're preparing that and you're tossing all of that in there. Mm -hmm. um, you can toss in, um, you can even toss in hair because hair will find, it'll break down. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either. I was reading one, one um, day in my organic gardening magazine and um, they said that they were collecting hair from the barber shop and you could compost hair. So. It's strange that some of the stuff that you actually can't wow. compost that it will break down. But I mean, if it turns into what we call that black gold, uh -huh. which is the compost, mm -hmm. then I say use it. You know, wow. but I, I haven't used any um, thing odd in the compost um, like that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I I said I, I just wasn't going to go do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I I have used um, horse manure that I got from the stables because okay. early on. Um, we um, could go up to the stables and get the horse manure. Yeah. And even early on, I, I used to get the city's um, collection. Um, Tacoma had a collection spot where they would compost the leaves and stuff. Uh -huh. But then, um, since I say I'm an organic gardener, I started thinking, okay, so where do they get their leaves from? Mm -hmm. So if they're cleaning the street, they're collecting the leaves from the street. So that's not a good thing if you're if you are a, a person who's going to do strictly organic because you know what's in the street. We have the runoff from the cars and the runoff from other areas that could pollute your compost. So what you do in that case, you're just going to have to do your own composting. But you still can use that composted material on um, your flowers and your trees and shrubs, stuff that you're not going to be ingesting, okay? Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, since I'm organic, I just try to do it organically all the way around. Nice. Okay. And um, my kids, like I told you, I started them off in diapers. They always were out there helping me. <laughs> um, here's a picture when they got a little older and we grew the big sunflowers. Mm -hmm. We had the big sunflower heads and we wow. grew those. And so I said, okay, let's take a picture. And I wanted my children to know where the tomatoes came from, you mm -hmm. know, not just that, you know, you can go to the store and you can buy it off of the shelf. But mm -hmm. so many kids, they're not exposed, thank you, they're not exposed to, to that. And they just, you know, they think we just go to the store and it disappears magically, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's, not, that's not it. You should know where your food comes from. And I also wanted my kids to know how to grow it because what's the old saying? If you teach a man to fish, yeah. then he can feed himself. Yes. Right? <laughs> so I wanted to teach my kids that so they'll know how to survive. If anything did happen, they would know how to, to do for themselves. So we, we grew tomatoes, we grew celery, um, we grew the butternut squash. Wow. and. Um, I was opened, um, I opened the um, back up and my brother had some friends who were, was interested in gardening and they actually wanted to see a gardening work, working uh, wow. progress. So I said, yeah, bring them over. So I ended up having a little lecture in the backyard Beautiful. and some friends came over. Did you know, um, do you know about the loofah sponge? Do you know that's a vegetable? That's actually a vegetable. It's a squash. Oh, wow. And it, um, a lot of Africans know about it because Lufa comes from a, a lot of the African countries. So it's a, a vegetable that grows and it looks like a giant cucumber. Mm -hmm. And once it gets the, to the size of about 12 inches and maybe about 3 or 4 inches to 5 inches wide, then it becomes very tough. 
Okay, yeah, so after that loofah gets really big, the fibers inside get tough. Mm -hmm. And the loofahs that you see in your store for scrubbing purposes um, is actually that squash. You can eat it when it's a baby, so when it's about the size of a, um, I say a, um, a half size of an English cucumber, because the English cucumbers are usually long and thin. So when it's half that size, the loofah is tender and you can eat it just like a regular squash. Mm -hmm. But once it gets big, that's when the fibers get tough. Wow. And you just dry it, peel off the skin, shake out the seeds, uh -huh. and it's gonna kind of look yucky, the skin color, but all you do is soak it in a little bit of bleach water uh -huh. and it turns to the light color and you have your scrub, scrubbing <laughs> brush. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't have any idea where they come from. <laughs> so I like I like telling people that story. And um, yeah, so back in that day, that's what I was showing you and talking about it. And and if you're going to grow your vegetables, you must learn how to preserve them because you are always going to have an overload of something. And I know we share because I always share. I'm always giving a handful of this or a bag full of this to somebody mm -hmm. but um, I ended up having to learn how to make my own preserves mm -hmm. my own vinegars mm -hmm. um, I know how to dry my vegetables and I experimented with drying in the sun mm -hmm. um, solar drying and um, I also like to um, make my own sugar too mm -hmm. and you've heard of stevia yes. okay that's green plant and that's what we call in the gardening world green sugar and I actually dry my own stevia nice. and take and um, sprinkle the leaves on my um, cereal or in my tea or on my desserts yeah so you learn a lot of things when you garden beautiful and that's neat. my other thing is over the years I've just fallen in love with herbs mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, all along, I've always planted herbs, even from the very beginning part, because um, herbs are one of the plants you've heard of com uh, companion planting. So herbs are some of the things that we use when we want to protect certain plants from certain insects, yeah. or um, even to give certain plants um, energy, because I grow my own um, natural plant fertilizer and oh, wow. that is um, comfrey root. Mm -hmm. Comfrey root is, is a natural plant fertilizer. When you actually um, break down the leaves, soak them in water, it turns, it looks like a tea. Mm -hmm. Muddy looking and dark looking, just like a dark tea. And um, I just take that and soak, that, soak my leaves a little bit and then dump that on my um, plants, feed my plants that way. The leaves of the comfrey end up having a lot of mineral compounds that um, our plants need yeah. and it's one of the natural fertilizers that you can actually grow mm -hmm. and and I've been doing that for years. Yeah, Comfrey so. can become um, sort of an invasive plant and but if you grow it and just keep a hand on keeping it down and chopping it down it shouldn't bother you and it makes a lovely little um, spike with um, a whole bunch of little bell-shaped flowers mm -hmm. and they e they're either um, white or pinkish to lavender color mm -hmm. and I, I like it because of the flowers mm -hmm. and like I said you know it can become invasive but you just stay on top of it. Yeah, I have yeah. never grown it but I, I have drank uh, some, some of that comfort? Yeah, okay, and slimy. Yeah. yeah you need to be <laughs> careful with comfort. Uh -huh. uh, I tell everybody you know some people Maybe. still look at me and laugh at me and they said you can get all of this stuff on the internet you know but I guess I'm from the old school and I have books I have mm -hmm. tons and tons of books and I tell everyone if they're going to really get into the herbs and want to start using them medicinally you need to get a good herbal um, book on herbs and their preps and what they're used for, both culinary uses and for your medicinal uses. Um, and I always start off with the basics because everybody's familiar with most of our culinary herbs, basil, parsley, thyme, rosemary, sage, 
all of those we're all familiar with because we cook with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're going to be as harmful as something that we're not as familiar with, mm -hmm. like your, um, well, ginger, we, we cook with that too. So we're, we're pretty familiar with that. Um, let's see. Um, we're, we're not, oh, aloe. We don't cook with it, mm -hmm. but it's one of the herbs that you can use to drink, mm -hmm. um, and it helps digestion, it helps stomach problems, and it also has um, things in it that help your skin, mm -hmm. and it's one of the herbs that I use um, to make an herbal shampoo, mm -hmm. and the um, aloe itself is one of those herbs that's called a heal oil, mm -hmm. because it actually helps rejuvenate um, cells. Mm -hmm. It helps rejuvenate your cells. Mm -hmm. And you always hear people talking about the aloe plant. You should always have one of those plants around in case you get a burn or something. Mm -hmm. And that really truly does work yes. with the burns. Um, two years ago my husband was playing with the kids and playing with fireworks and got <laughs> a blister, a real bad blister burn on his hand. And I just took and sliced one of my aloe's um, leaves open and just slapped it on his hand. and. I'm telling you, within a half an hour, uh -huh. the blister had gone down mm -hmm. and the healing process had started. Mm -hmm. So that plant really does work. And in the islands, um, periodically we have visited Jamaica. They use that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the um, young ladies who do the massages, you can get a massage anywhere and on the <laughs> beach. They just take that plant and squeeze the um, aloe juice on you and just oh, rub it yeah. in and use that for massaging. So it's it's a overall like I said it's called a heal all plant because it really yeah. works it really works. But now over the years um, I I'm having some um, medical knee issues. So instead of having my raised beds now, I said I wanted to do still have my garden and still be able to access it. So I had my husband build me a like a three tier shelf system okay. and um, now I'm growing everything in containers um, because I've always uh, throughout my gardening lecture times I've always told people that it doesn't matter if you have the space or not but if you have sunlight coming into your apartment mm -hmm. or if you have a small deck or something you can always grow something and you can grow in pots and now pots are, are the big thing now because they are even hybridizing plants to be smaller mm -hmm. and compacter mm -hmm. so you can actually get plants that are made for containers. Mm -hmm. So it's not a hard thing. Everyone can have something growing. Everybody can yeah. have something growing these days. And for the diehards who <laughs> say they still can't do gardening, <laughs> you can do gardening because you can always sprout. Yes. You can grow your own mung beans, you can grow your own wheatgrass, you can grow your own alfalfa sprouts, your broccoli sprouts. Um, you can grow anything under the sun now. If you're concerned about your sprouting seeds, make sure you get them from a reputable place. Go on the internet, look up sprouting seeds, boom, a whole bunch of companies should come up mm -hmm. where you can order your seeds. Um, right here in the city, your health food stores, um, we have a, a, a health food store called Tacoma Co-op. Okay. They sell yeah. sprout seeds, um, yes, um, health food stores. Um, most stores now, uh, a lot of the stores are getting into Whole Foods. You should be able to find something there. Um, and you'd be surprised because if you go to their um, raw brain area where they have their beans, you actually can buy those things and stop them. Yeah. Yes can actually sprout them. Whenever I do my um, wheatgrass sprouts, that's where I go um, to get my wheatgrass. I don't necessarily order order them. I just go and either buy the winter um, wheat or the red summer wheat or whatever, mm -hmm. and I take and come home and I will sprout my wheat. My kids grew up with growing wheat berries, mm -hmm. and the first day or two of sprouting, the wheat will actually pop open and produce a little sprout. Mm -hmm. And within that, I'll say, I'll, I'll say give it three days, mm -hmm. within the three day period, growth period, 
you can actually eat the Greek berry, and when you chomp on it, it has a very sweet taste. Oh, wow. And I use that um, when, with my kids like candy. You know, they wanted something sweet, and I Aww. said, you can, you can do this. And this is one way I got them started into growing the wheat. And it's so easy, you know, it's, it's nothing, you don't have to have any kind of special equipment. I always tell people, you can sprout, just get an old mayonnaise jar, mm -hmm. piece of cheesecloth, and a rubber band, and your seeds. Uh -huh. And that's all you need to do your sprouting, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not hard. These things aren't hard, and we can... We could feed the world. Actually, you know, if you can, if you can do some of these things, you can save a lot of money. Because mm -hmm. one, if you're spending, say, three dollars for a small packet of alfalfa seeds uh -huh. that have been sprouted, you can sprout those same that same amount of sprouts, um, alfalfa sprouts, for like pennies, wow. pennies. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. get into sprouting if you're still not sure about growing. Um, a vegetable garden and if you are try it in a little pot and then once you graduate from that if you can get a community garden plot mm -hmm. good luck to you <laughs> you know as you were talking I heard you mention I guess around here in this area um, you said there was a co-op mm -hmm. so I guess where could people get fresh organic foods the other than the co-op and then other than what you grow where do you go um, you can um, get on the internet and look up um, farmers markets in the Washington DC area mm -hmm. and something should pop up with a listing of all of the farmers markets that we have in the DC and DC I tell you we, we, we have pretty we have a lot we mm -hmm. really do have a lot in the area um, they're putting markets in um, in my neighborhood right where I am now there is a farmers market that has been going on for years and it's right at the um, corner of um, Carroll Street and um, Cedar. I think that's Cedar and Carroll. And they close all um, a whole little section of Carroll Street. And this this is actually in Tacoma, Maryland, which I am like a few blocks from. I can walk to it. Mm -hmm. I live in the district, but I'm a few blocks from Tacoma, Maryland side and they have the farmers market there every Sunday mm -hmm. and it goes on um, I think I think they have it it's, it's open all all the way up to the winter oh, nice. they still have um, things that they sell I know that you know when the fall comes in they start selling the cider apple ciders and stuff so it's open uh, for a very long time and now um, when I was down uh, on on the mall for the uh, folk life festival there was also a farmer's market um, right behind on Jefferson, off of Jefferson um, Drive. Um, we were set up right on, um, in front of the old castle mm -hmm. down there on the mall. And I guess it's maybe a block or two on the one side of the castle. And that was off, off of Jefferson there was an actual farmer's market that they had set up down there. So I think it's best, oh, the other thing is um, the D.C. Public Library System, they should also have a little pamphlet in there because I know a few years ago, I mean, I think I've seen it every summer. Mm -hmm. They always have a little pamphlet on um, farmer's markets in the area. Mm -hmm. So I think if they're still getting that, they should have um, those at the library that you could pick up and it will have a list of all of the farmers markets I think in DC and in Maryland and I think they also listed in Virginia because they wow. listed a, they listed a whole bunch of the different markets all over the different states really? yeah so it's it's not hard to find you can you can find a farmers market I'm sure yeah wow good deal so I guess you since you been here you've been here for a while is there any particular type of food that you associate with these Maybe what's easiest to go for you here? Uh, any of your favorites? What were my what foods? Um, I don't. I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I don't. Every everything is fascinating to me to grow all of the things that I have grown. Um, I, I I grew things to teach my kids, like cotton. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to see where the cotton came from. Right now, I have peanuts growing. I have ginger growing. I mean, I have all of these things that anybody can grow it, and it's not hard. I mean, 
take for instance the ginger. All you do is go to, you can go to the grocery store, look for a nice, good, fresh piece of ginger, and you'll notice on the ginger, you should see these little nodules sticking out on it. And as long as they look fresh, and they might be sort of creamy looking or greenish, light, light greenish looking uh -huh. in color, if they look fresh and the plant is not mushy, but nice and firm, bring that piece of ginger home, put it in a pot, with some container soil, and when I talk container soil, that means soil that I did not dig up from my garden, mm -hmm. but I've <laughs> actually bought it, because in the containers, you want your containers to be as light as possible. Yeah. And when you go out and just dig up your soil from outside, you're digging, most of the times it's gonna be a little heavier. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that. You want your soil to be nice, fluffy, and light. Mm -hmm. So if you can buy a, a pack of container soil, you can even get your container soil at CVS. So no <laughs> excuses, but get your nice little size pot. I'll say a good, maybe eight inch size pot and take your, um, probably about half of the size of your hand, uh, the ginger nozzle should be. Mm -hmm. And you put that in the soil, put some soil in, make sure it has proper drainage. Mm -hmm. Put it in um, your pot, cover it with soil, and then within about, I'll say, give it give it a good two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. You should probably see a little tiny sprout starting. And once the ginger starts growing, it's going to look like um, bamboo, little mm -hmm. um, spikes of bamboo. Yeah. And um, Nia, you saw what I what mine looked like, so you can verify beautiful. that. They yes. are beautiful. <laughs> And to harvest it, you just have to take your hand and lightly loosen the soil up and pull your whole ginger piece up, the piece that's sprouting, mm -hmm. and take and break off a piece that's not sprouting and then stick it right back into your pot. Mm -hmm. And that way you can continually have a harvest. Wow. So easy. Very easy. You went to the grocery store and got that one. Yeah. <laughs> Real easy. Wow. For like little ones. For little or nothing, right. A little piece of ginger. Not going to cost you no more than maybe a dollar fifty, exactly. depending on what size piece you get. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you can start growing your own ginger. Mm -hmm. And I bring my ginger plant inside in the wintertime um, because it can't take our winters here. Because mm -hmm. our winters are so cold. You know, mm -hmm. we get 20, you know, we get below 20 degrees uh -huh. so um, the ginger is actually a tropical plant yeah. so if you do have it and it grows and you don't want it to die bring it in for the winter mm -hmm. yeah make sure you get it in wow so okay so you're gardening now and I have seen the garden and it is very beautiful that uh, I saw the fig tree and the plum tree and the apple tree uh, so please tell us about what you're growing you know you're growing ginger but the tons of herbs and foods that you use. <laughs> well, I know, I know I have tons of herbs back there. Because uh, like I said, I've fallen in love with herbs. So I have um, tons of lemon balm, um, oh, lots nice. of these herbs. Well, just about all of the herbs that I'm, I'm naming, you can make tea from. Mm -hmm. My lemon balm, my lemon verbena. I have parsley. I have basil. I have uh, two different kinds of basil. I have two different kinds of sages. Mm -hmm. I have... Um, Oh, the ginger, I have what we call lovelich. Mm -hmm. Lovelich is an herb that looks very similar to um, celery, mm -hmm. and the stalks of it are a little thinner than the celery stalk, and it has <coughs> the celery-looking leaves on it, and when you harvest it, it sort of has a sweet celery taste and smell. Mm -hmm. It can be very potent, so when you use it, I use it like parsley, so I chop it up and add it to my dishes, but I won't add a lot of it because it, it can impart a real stronger taste to your soups, mm -hmm. your stews. Um, when I make my tuna salad or chicken salad, oh, I'll chop it up um, nice with yummy. my parsley. <laughs> yes, and the stem of it is hollow inside, and if you grow enough of it and, you, and it gets big enough, because I have several sizes. I have one in a real big pot, and then I have one in a little pot that I was use, using to show people um, a different size. Mm -hmm. Well, when the stalk gets about the size of my baby finger, mm -hmm. it can get that fat. You can actually um, cut it and use it like a natural straw to suck your Bloody Marys. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
So it will, yes, it will impart the celery taste to your Bloody Mary mix, and then you can draw it through the straw from the plant. So you have you make a live straw. So I, I have I have so many different herb plants that I can do so many different things with them. Um, my herb plants like my chamomile, um, I can make tea from that, and that can also become a dye. Um, mm -hmm. a, a dye for your hair, but it does not stay on your hair, and you can also use it as a dye for materials too. Um, I have um, I have tomatoes. I have two different kinds of tomatoes growing back there. I have onion chives. I have garlic chives. I have not planted my garlic um, from the bulbs yet because I want to plant mine in the fall. Mm -hmm. So come next spring, I can start harvesting. The early stalks and then by the end of the summer I can harvest my bulbs yeah. but um, you could you could grow it and do it throughout the summer and just harvest the stalks and you'll have a, a nice thick sort of um, garlicky flavored onion stalk mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. you can you can do both you can do both with it um, let's see what else do I have I have something called bee balm and bee balm is another herb that's used for teas and um, it makes a lovely little spike of um, purplish, pinkish flowers. And those flowers are also um, used by the bees themselves. And they go about pollinating and they can go back and make the honey. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot, most of the herbs and my plants that I have growing in my garden, um, I have a lot of pollinators in coming to it. And the pollinators are your bees mm -hmm. and the pollinators are also your butterflies. So I have all of those um, little insects visiting. Um, I just took a picture of a praying mantis that I had. And the praying mantis, um, he was brought over um, from, I think, Asia when there was a, we had a, um, some beetle or something was, was doing a lot of uh, damage to um, crops. And they thought that the praying mantis was a good natural predator. And it is a natural predator, but the praying mantis doesn't have a brain like we do, so it eats good and it eats <laughs> bad insects. So, you know, I, I still like them in my garden mm -hmm. because they will eat certain insects that cause problems, but they also eat my good buddies too. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I like them around. Like, like I say, I like them around, and, and when my kids were growing up, we learned all about the different insects, you know, and the praying mantis was a nice one that we could do. Wow. Beautiful. I saw, I did see some mint back there. Oh yeah, I have, I have, I have orange mint, spearmint, peppermint, and chocolate mint growing. Uh -huh. How so does your chocolate mint taste? It tastes just like chocolate. Uh -huh. It tastes just like chocolate, smells like chocolate, but it has a minty flavor. Mm -hmm. um, a chalk, so it's, it's like you're eating a peppermint patty. Wow. It'll have, it'll have that minty, chocolatey flavor, yeah. So do you use any organic, um, you were telling me about the, the comfrey plant, uh -huh. use, but what else do you use? I know you use neem oil. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I use the neem oil when I'm spraying my fruit trees. Um, then I use um, natural um, fish emulsion. You can get fish emulsion or you can get kelp emulsion. Mm -hmm. And I use both, and you can buy them even mixed together in a container, fish and kelp emulsion mixed. And I usually use that to fertilize my pots, because I usually try to fertilize my pots um, every two weeks, because when you have things growing in containers and you water, you're all constantly flushing out your nutrients more so than you would if they were growing in the ground. Yeah. So I like to keep adding them back in and I don't like to add the um, stronger, harsher fertilizer. Okay. But I can still buy, I, I do, I, I have some um, natural time release fertilizer that I sprinkle on okay. some of my heavy feeders. Okay. Tomatoes are heavy feeders, um, sweet potatoes and white potatoes mm -hmm. are heavy feeders. And if you want, you can always sprinkle the time release kind that you can get at your. Um, you can you can get um, natural um, uh, fertilizers now at Home Depot, Lowe's, mm -hmm. um, any one of the places that sell um, um, 
plants and stuff like binkies out here in, in Maryland because I, I do go to binkies um, when I was going to do the um, lecture on the mall mm -hmm. I, I went to binkies and brought one of my um, herb plants the yarrow because yarrow is one of those herbs that um, was used for the um, hair rinse and I wanted people to actually see what it looked like uh -huh. and I brought a plant there so, so they could see it. And I, I have some growing in my pots back there, but you know, when you're showing it off, you want to make a nice plant that looks pretty. I didn't yeah. want my, my sprawly plant all over, so I went and brought a, a, a pretty looking one. Wow. But um, what else do I have? Oh, I have, I have um, several different kinds of fruit like we were talking about. I, I, I'm trying blueberries for the first time in containers outside, mm -hmm. so I only brought one plant just to see how that's going to do. Mm -hmm. And if it, does, if it works well, then I'll add on to it next year. And my plum plant, it produced, and I actually counted 29 plums on it, but back mm -hmm. when we had that hurricane come through and all of the wind, well, I had the wind damage. It knocked off a lot of the um, fruit, mm -hmm. and um, I actually only harvested two plums. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I knew, I do know it does produce, uh -huh. and Please. I can have some kind of plant fruit production. Um, my figs won't be producing until probably October, uh, middle of October, on into November, and actually if our December is mild, I can still have some figs coming in. Mm -hmm. And I'm growing what they call honey or lemon figs. Mine are not brown. They're actually the light green or lemony colored um, figs. Mm -hmm. And um, they're very, very sweet, honey sweet. Um, oh so I have my fight with the birds every morning when they <laughs> do start getting ripe. And my apple tree, I'm blessed that I have the space and yeah. the apple tree is about 20, I'll say 26 years old. Wow. And um, it has been producing pretty good for the last five years. But I still fight with the um, squirrels. Yeah. I oh, fight sure. with the squirrels. <laughs> and the birds will pick at them. Uh -huh. But the squirrels, I get so upset because they actually will take a bite out of one and then go to another one and take Aww. a bite. So they, you know, we, we have a, a squirrel <laughs> issue. But I still share with, with our friends. Of and um, my backyard is very friendly with, with all the insects, the birds, the um, squirrels. I have, I have seen um, raccoons. Mm -hmm. I have also seen possums in the back. Um, I have a friendly um, woodpecker um, that visits every morning and he's down along the fence line where there's a little old rotten piece of wood and I know he's picking the beetles and the little <laughs> worms in that. Um, I have um, even uh, about five years ago we had a red fox and I took a picture of it. We had a red fox that came and visited the back. Oh. Yeah, uh, my husband saw him back then and he said, Fanny, come see this. And it was a <laughs> fox. So we have lots of critters. Yeah. I heard you mention binkies, and then somebody else mentioned binkies too, so that must be a staple here in this area where you can kind of go get the organic, that's the organic, where all, organic yes, Walmart. Yes, it is, it is, it is. I, I like binkies. They, they can be rather expensive, but I, I, I'll take that back because when I first started doing my herbs, I would go out there and, and they always had a really good selection mm -hmm. of lots of different kinds of herbs. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm going, um, I, I meant to pick the leaf. I, I'll go back there and pick it and bring it, because I want you to smell it. Patchatouli. Uh -huh. And I use that herb when I'm making my little lavender and um, scented um, fragrant bundles. Um, I make my own potpourri, uh -huh. that's what I was looking for, yeah. potpourri, the word potpourri. Um, and that has such a fragrance and I have had some that I dried and put in containers and saved and now I've had it for like five years and it literally still has that fragrance. Wow. So that fragrance, mm -hmm. if you store it right, mm -hmm. it will still last for a very long time. And I find that Binky's has more of your exotic herbs. Uh -huh. um, I brought my bay um, laurel plant there because oh. I'm, I'm growing that too. And I brought the the, um, the, the, um, the one I just mentioned. 
Yeah, that's a Thule. I brought that one from Binkies. And I wow. brought I brought I brought the yarrow from Binkies because I, I just they had just a beautiful plant. Mm -hmm. And um, they end up having a lot of um, herb plants that you may not see at your regular places like the Lowe's or the Home yeah. Depot or <coughs> Kmart because Kmart will sell herbs too. But they usually sell your basics, you know, your mints, your um, basil, and um, your regular thyme and your regular sage. But at Binky's, you would find your chocolate mint yeah. or your orange mint or your several different kinds of sages. Um, they usually have more variety, and then within that um, herb family, you can get one or two that would be in the same family but a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, so I know you were um, telling me about the, the different foods and stuff, and I know you do a bunch of teas, you do the uh, uh, packages with the soaps and maybe the oils and the potpourri. So do you have any particular that's special to you, special preparations? that, you know, maybe it is your all-time favorite, you will pass on, um, anything that you would use. Well, just, just like when you ask me, do I have a favorite vegetable <laughs> or a favorite herb plant, it's like, I, you know, everything is my favorite plant, mm -hmm. and, and because I work with them, and because I just love what I do with my, my plants, and um, when I grow my food, you know, the tomatoes and stuff, I, I, I'm, I'm also, I guess, say a pretty good cook I don't want to brag <laughs> but I do enjoy cooking and and like I said you once you start growing a lot of things you have to learn how to harvest them when to harvest them when to put them up and how to put them up mm -hmm. like I like making the vinegars and I like making oh, the, nice. the, um, the potpourris and stuff and because I grow so many herbs I got into making that potpourri um, because I, I do um, make gift baskets on the side. I have a little side business where um, if you want a gift basket made, I will take a little history of you and say you wanted a birthday basket. Okay. So I would ask you things like what's your favorite color or if you wanted a basket made for a particular person, I would you know get their favorite color, what do they like to eat, because um, I will, I will add food items in in it. Nice. Um, I do wedding baskets. I do all sorts of baskets, baby baskets, birthday, weddings, anniversaries. So you know, I fell in love with doing that just by accident. Every so often during the Christmas holidays, um, my two sister-in-laws and my mother and aunts and stuff, instead of just buying something from the store, I said, well, let me make my gift. Mm -hmm. And because I make my potpourris and stuff like that, I made it a little more personal. Mm -hmm. And so I would start making gift baskets mm -hmm. and gave to people. And my sister-in-laws, they were the ones that really got me into doing the gift baskets because mm -hmm. they said, Danny, you make such beautiful gift baskets. Mm -hmm. you got to do Start selling them, you know, <laughs> and so that's that's kind of like how I got started with that little business, oh, nice. and um, it's it's done pretty good, you know. I, I take, I'm, I'm not out there on the web or anything, so mm -hmm. it's only by word of mouth. Nice. But I do have business cards, and I will pass my business cards out. Um, in fact, I have a gift basket that I made, and I have it waiting. I'm going to take it to a birthday party oh, Saturday, nice. <laughs> and um, you can look at it and see it. And, um, you know, but I, I, it's like I don't have any one particular herb or one particular vegetable. I, I've just fallen in love with everything that I grow. Wow. And um, I just like being around the plants and I love it. Um, my mother, um, since she's gotten older, mommy's 92, we're blessed with having her here that long. Mm -hmm. um, she has glaucoma, so she's legally blind. So I didn't want her to stop um, not enjoying the garden. Yeah. Wow. So the herbs you can touch, feel, smell, yeah. and that makes her feel good. Yeah. Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> That's so nice. nice. Yeah. The, the, the senses. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Oh, 
Beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And so it seems as if like you have really embraced it and you really live this way with nature and kind of a lot of different areas and facets of your life. I do. And I know it can really, really, really be calming. And you oh, it is. I know just by this conversation, you pass that information along and you actually help others. And I think that is awesome. Thank you. Oh thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, f- I feel good about yes. what I do. When I when I talk about the herbs and when I talk about growing your food, it, it really does make me feel good. Mm-hmm. And um, I have a connection, I guess, with people. Mm-hmm. And they can see it. Yeah. Beautiful. Aww. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for opening your space, opening the garden, opening just of your heart, honestly. Thank you. Because this has really, really been a joy and I really hope that somebody really gets some good information from this because I think it's really, really helpful just in how we live. Yeah. And not how we should live, but just another alternative way. Yeah. You know, yeah. we can exist with yeah. nature, with each other. Yeah, I, I think we really need to go back to, to our older ways, you know, how we used to have gardens yeah. and, and I mean, you see, for example, we, we don't have the air condition, you know, but I mean, if you keep still, you're comfortable yeah. in here. And um, it's, it's just another way of, of living. I mean, you know, nowadays, if something were to happen, people would probably just go totally willy-nilly because they don't have their air condition. They don't have their their computers. They don't have this. Uh-huh. But, you know, I always tell people when it's hot outside and stuff, you notice you don't see the birds and you usually mm-hmm. don't hear them. Mm-hmm. And and they're just taking a chill pill for, mm-hmm. for that time. When it's hot, you just relax and stay cool. Yeah. And then later on in the evening, that's when you come out and do what you have to do, mm-hmm. you know. And I think in our rush, rush world, we're rushing around for everything, mm-hmm. you know. And we don't, we don't take and sit still and just enjoy the cool breeze. Mm-hmm. Because if you sit still, it's actually a breeze blowing out there. Mm-hmm. And if you just put your mind in a different place, it is cool. Yeah. It's cool to you. Yeah. yeah. Very much true. Yeah. Oh, we, and I think we, you know, should probably take a note from the birds and the insects. We should. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Hamilton. Is this it? This has been a joy. Okay, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you. Well, before you go, you know I had.